Wow, what do you know? It's time for the Pocket Knife Show. Hey, it's Mike on the mic again for another episode of the Pocket Knife Podcast. For years, I've used the Bible Gateway website while working on my sermons and other projects at work. This site allows me to compare versions of the Bible quickly. It has commentaries I can search. I can copy verses from the site and paste them into my sermon notes. What's not to love? Ads. I know the good folks at Bible Gateway need to generate revenue. All free sites do. So I'm okay with an ad or two along the edges of the page as I research and read, but recently the ads changed in a disturbing way. They had video with sound which played automatically. Think through the implications of this development. I'm getting ready to teach Sunday school and suddenly there's cheaply made electronic music playing. I can't X out of the ad. It continues to play. Everyone's staring at me as I wait for a wavy-haired European Jesus to go away. Midweek, I'm working on my sermon. We'll say it's on the Song of Solomon. Suddenly, an announcer shouts, You need a new mattress. No money down. I've completely lost my train of thought. Derailed. And the tacky Temu ads are still flashing along the edges of the screen. They won't ever go away. I did use an ad blocker for a short time, but then I got pop-ups from the site telling me that ads are how they pay for everything. I want the site to continue to exist, and the ad blocker became annoying, so I returned to the blinky garbage in the margins. Let me ask you this. Do you ever have trouble focusing when you sit down with your Bible? You want to hear God's voice, you desire to know his will for your life, to know what's good and wise in his sight, but your mind goes a bit crazy as you put eyes to the pages of God's good news. Your to-do list for the day intrudes. The argument you had with your boss starts replaying. You wonder who won the game last night. Did you send that important email before you left work? What are you going to eat for supper? Did you wish your brother-in-law a happy birthday? Once or twice in all this hubbub, you tried to refocus. You took a deep breath. You started the passage over. You got a paragraph or two farther in before the dam burst again. The mental volume turned up to 10 on everything but the Bible. No big deal. When you catch yourself off course again, you redirect. The problem comes when you run out of time and have to go do something else. You can't not go to work when it's time to go to work. Sorry I'm late, I had to finish my Bible reading, isn't going to fly with your employer. At least not most of them. What's a body to do when focus is hard? First, remember that pages read is not the point when your Bible is open. Knowing and encountering the author is the aim when eyes are on sacred text. God revealed himself to people in the Bible. He reveals himself to people today through the Bible. The Holy Spirit is with you when you read. God, I want to know you as I read today as a good prayer to pray before you begin. Anticipating a meetup with God can help you to focus. It turns a task into an adventure. The second thing to bear in mind is this. The enemy of your soul does not want you to know or encounter God. So along with the God, I want to know you prayer, you might want to ask for protection. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. God will answer that prayer. He has greater power than all the forces of evil. He can give you the strength to overcome. He can give you ears to hear and eyes to see and the mind to discern. You will not be blinded to the truth or turned away from obedience when you trust him. Back to those audio ads. I actually took the time to contact the site with my concerns. They didn't reply directly to me, but the video ads are muted by default now. May the devil be likewise muted in your life, and God be honored as he works through you to do good in his kingdom. Oh no, it's that I know we've come to the end of the show. See you next time.